The picture that's faded out that you can't see at all is a picture of Jason. Jason's a network architect at one of our larger customers. A year ago, he made a comment. And this wasn't a comment in a meeting. He made a comment in the hallway after the meeting. We weren't even there. He made a comment to one of our partners. And it went viral in his organization. It went viral with our partner. And it got back to us. And a year ago, it went viral on our side, too. He said, I chose Big Switch because it was the closest thing we could get to Amazon networking on-prem. I spent the last almost 10 years of my life thinking about how we can build the best software-defined networking products that we can possibly build. And this one comment for me a year ago was perspective changing. It changed to me the why we build what we build and what we should be building next. We went to, for me from being the seventh or eighth inning to a vision where we're in the first or second inning. And that was this incredibly powerful moment. It rocketed around the company. So his, his journey and our journey start with, started with this, hey, we looked around. We were actually the closest to Amazon networking on-prem. This was a year ago. But there was a lot more that we could do there. And we could be a much better, better partner to him there. As his organization was expanding their data center with us, with their plans to go to Amazon, it started changing our perspectives on, hey, are we an on-prem company or are we something different? And I'm going to show you what I mean. So today, this morning, we announced what we're calling the cloud-first networking portfolio. And I'm going to show two bookends, and we're going to show demos, and then we're going to show a whole bunch of stuff in between. I'm assuming everybody in the room is familiar with the concept of a VPC. But we'll go into it a little bit more for everybody on, uh, on the stream. We'll go into what's important, why we think it's important, why we think it's really different from anything that on-prem networking has delivered to date. And with our next BCF software release, we're going to be the first to launch on-premise VPCs. This is something we're just incredibly proud of. We think it's, it suddenly just takes the next step on what are we doing with SDN. We have a series of announcements that are going to come through the year, and they culminate at the end of the year with multi-cloud director, a system to manage networking, a system to manage analytics, a system to manage on-prem, a system to manage in-cloud, a system to manage many, many sites. You're just about to see the first public preview of that here in about 20 minutes. And we're going to show you a whole bunch of stuff in between. We're going to show you the products that we launched in April, on-prem flow analytics and the packet recorder node. Back in April, this was taking the best of analytics best practices that we see in the cloud and bringing them on-prem. We're going to show a little preview of big monitoring fabric in public cloud. This was when we recognized, in the process of taking the best of cloud on-prem and analytics, we recognized there are actually areas that where on-prem was even advanced from cloud and packet recording and packet capture. And we're going to show you what we did about that by launching a version of BMF for the cloud. We're going to show you a version of BCF launched for public cloud. So you have consistent VPC management, both on-prem and in cloud. But first, we're going to show you how it caps off with, with MCD. We think, I mean, it's kind of our guess as we were prepping for this that pretty much every stop you're taking along the path here, somebody's talking about hybrid cloud. It's a big thing on the vendor side because it's a big thing for all of our careers as networking professionals. We have to figure out what the networking role is in hybrid cloud. I treat this as a first principle challenge for all of us in the industry. The approach that we're taking we think is pretty different from the approach that a lot of others are taking. We, uh, you know, maybe disparagingly, we kind of heard the term and, and, and picked it up. You know, there's one vendor strategy that we call the vHardware strategy. You know, let's take products that we've been working on for 15 years and let's put them in the cloud. We actually sat in on one of our uh, competitors' presentations and I remember the presenter saying, the thing that people love about our product is that it's the CLI that they're used to on a VM in the cloud. <laughs> and I remember thinking, you know, I don't, think, I, I don't think that's the end goal. I just, I don't think that's quite right. I, I, that just doesn't, that doesn't. Something about that doesn't feel right. So we're taking a very different strategy, right? We said, hey, how can we make on-prem look as much like the cloud as we possibly can? And then how can we make that consistent? So VPCs everywhere, VPC analytics everywhere. It's a slightly different first step, and it lends itself to a slightly different last step. I saw a lot of head nodding. In fact, about 3 quarters of the people in the room said, when I said VPC, started nodding, but just in case. I've been amazed 
absolutely amazed when we've been showing this over the last couple of weeks, just very privately and quietly. I feel like the professionals in our industry split. There are people who recognize a VPC, and there are folks who think it's a protocol from somewhere circa 2002. <laughs> a, a VPC, it's a logical L2, L3 network. It connects cloud resources. Amazon calls them VPCs. Azure calls them VNets. Uh, Google actually started with a different name and changed the name to VPCs. So we feel pretty good that this is just an industry term that we can use. We can talk about the day in the life of a packet. It's interesting. I think for most of us, it's kind of like a VRF. But I would say it's probably the least important part of what a VPC is. The most interesting part, so the least interesting part to me is that, OK, the day in the life of the packet is kind of like a VRF. The mid-interesting part is all the automation that VPCs bring in around how they show up and how they get pruned. Uh, I think that there's a lot of interesting stuff there. But the really interesting thing to me is how it creates as a service. For all of us, it's a product that we give to our colleagues who are app owners. Uh, let me start with a really simple example, and this is going to lend into the first demo of the day. And the example is BigSwitch. On the network that you're on right now, okay, let's see, we're streaming video to around 1,500, 2,000 people, give or take. We're currently running around 200 people in the company on this network. We have 80 racks worth of equipment downstairs. So fair size, spread across five different engineering teams. We're hosting POCs for multiple large customers at the moment. We run a fundamentally multi-tenant network. If we set up that multi-tenancy with VLANs and VRFs, would you ever picture me live for a group of networking experts who like a good laugh, <laughs> <laughs> who just walked into our office? Would you picture me just giving you the username and password to our entire network? Like, if we did this with VLANs and VRFs, I would it's, I would get fired for doing that, and I don't say that lightly. <laughs> um, so here it is. <laughs> we think this is the most important difference. Um, seriously, this is actually our office controller. This is everything I said is running live on this controller. Here's the IP address. Use the GUI, SSH in with the CLI. I invite you to do it right now. We created a VPC for you. This username and password will drop you into a VPC. Try to break something. Sure. Can figure whatever you <laughs> There's just Every right. person on this stream is going to know if that was All successful. Right. <clears throat> and while you're going, I'm just going to keep on, keep, keep on rolling here. This is an eye opener. We stumbled across this a couple of weeks ago. And I don't know that the broader networking community around us really recognizes the importance of this. Look at the Google search volume for Cisco VLAN. Versus AWS VPCs. In the next 12 months, these lines are going to cross, and there will actually be more people searching for AWS VPC than searching for VLAN. That's cool. Whether they're networking professionals or not, we have to admit that this new form of networking as a service is simply the dominant design. To make the example a little bit more grounded, this was a conversation we were having with a 2,500-person law firm, four-person networking team. I'm guessing this is a scope <laughs> and scale that's very familiar to a lot of people in this room and certainly a lot of people on the stream. I remember so well, the network architect said, hey, I mean, how are we going to do this? So we're expanding an old data center in San Jose. We have a new Greenfield data center going up in Denver. And on the east, we're doing a, a very, very large Amazon expansion. How with our four-person team are we going to do a, you know, build a design that we can then operate for the next five years? This, is, this feels like Mission Impossible. So our answer was put VPCs everywhere. With every new application you roll out, can you wrap it into a VPC? And suddenly have very, very nice consistency across on-prem and in cloud? Can that be the primary form of configuration for everything that the user can see, for everything that the app owners can see. And underneath, we'll take care of the plumbing. This was the director of infrastructure for a Fortune 500. You know, massive, massive team. 
we're sitting with him and he said, hey, if you look at the analytics stack that we have running on the cloud, you know, we're very oriented around VPC flow logs and a large tool chain that's built there. If we look at the analytics stack that we have for troubleshooting on-prem, we're very much around, built around packet recorders and NPM tools. He said, I have trouble keeping one ops team fully staffed. And with the two technology stacks I have, I need two ops teams. This doesn't make any sense. Even at Fortune 500 scale, he cannot afford to have the size teams that he needs when the technology stacks are so incredibly different. So that became the design challenge. Can we create really consistent packet and flow capture on-prem and in cloud? Can we have really consistent ways that we build out data lakes and data streams? And can we have really consistent analytic stacks that we build on top? And you're gonna see that today. The team would kill me if I just talked about the new stuff. Talking about our full journey. <laughs> yeah. We spent four years working on the product before we launched it. That was four years ago. We then spent four years perfecting both products. With Big Cloud Fabric, we started with this idea of this hardware software disaggregated leaf spine cloths. You will save money. Single point of control. You manage the entire leaf spine cloths as if it's one big chassis switch. I'm hoping that some people have gotten the CLI and are just on show run. We hope it doesn't look alien. It should kind of feel like one big switch with a bunch of line cards. It is simple to operate. I think that history to me is exciting. And many of our customers today, and certainly I believe many of our users, will actually stop there. They'll just use it as one big chassis switch. Same network operations they've always had. Fantastic. You just manage the entire DC like it's a chassis. But it's the next step that I'm really excited about. Because this next step is just different. It's different for all of us. The next step involves creating VPCs, the exact same VPC that we just let you guys log into, and giving them away. Give it to somebody. We think it changes the social contract between us and our colleagues. We think the next step is, hey, giving somebody who's not a networking professional a networking CLI is a little tricky. We think that we can do one step better. And you'll see all of the integrations that we're building here so that we actually show up in somebody's native language. We make networking admin for a, for a V admin. We make networking admin for a Nutanix admin. We use their language when we do it. And that's just VPCs. On the monitoring and analytics side, look, we started the product to say, when we said, hey, can we build a, a scale out network packet broker? Can we disaggregate the hardware and the software so we're using white box and bright box switching hardware so that we're using DP to KX86 appliances for the advanced stuff? With this design, you will save money. We had to do that as a step one. If somebody's ever managed a visibility fabric with multiple boxes, you know, multiple NPVs, it's a real pain in the neck. The original products were never designed for this. They were designed for 12 and 24 port use. Visibility fabrics have fundamentally grown and dramatically over the last five years. It is much simpler to operate from a single point of control, operate the whole thing like one big fabric. Many of our largest users will stop there. But enough, or at least just enough for me, enough and we'll add analytics nodes, the recorder nodes, the service nodes. We'll start to take what fundamentally people are used to when you look at analytics in cloud. They're used to a flow record between every single IP address not some of them. Sampling is not a question in cloud. You get every single flow record, period. Every VM, that is the expectation. And more and more users are, of our users are bringing that expectation on-prem. We always built this thing for multi-tenancy from the beginning, but can we then share it? Can we make the networking team not the only consumer of this data, but can we create really clean ways so the team known today as the networking team is actually providing this data. We're to providing this data to our colleagues. This is what gets me excited. So what's it using um, in order to capture the packets? And is it just metadata from the header, or is it actually uh, looking at the data? So we have both. We have both packet capture, which we'll show, a productized form of Google Stenographer, the massive packet scale database that Google built. Um, and then we have flow capture. So flow capture, we use uh, NetFlow and SFlow, but the way that we use it is one-to-one -one ratios. So it looks a lot more like the way that in cloud flow log gets used. Uh, and then we decorate it up a little bit, but the, 
you, you'll see a couple of demos here as we go. I think our goal is no more sampling. So instead of capturing at a choke point, so normally when I'm doing flow capture, I find a, check, a choke point, and I um, funnel all my traffic to a particular point, and then I put a tap to capture the packets if I want the raw packet flow, or I funnel it through a particular device and then get it to eject flow records, NetFlow, SFlow, whatever, JFlow. What you're saying is if big switches are fabric underneath that, I can get flow records off per, VV, per VVC in a private cloud. If big switch is a switching fabric, you get flow records across everything. <clears throat> Even if big switch is not the switching fabric, we tried very hard to hit a price point where you could tap every rack. That was really important. As we look down the road at integrations into V switches, can we actually get V tap? No, but I'm talking more about this cloud capability with the VPC functionality. I can get flow records per VPC. So mm -hmm. I could have a web DMZ, which has got 30 hosts in it, and I could get flow records for everything that crosses that VPC. Everything. Just by saying, give me that VPC feed it into an analytics engine of pick your favorite flavor of analytics, whoever it might be, cloud, off-prem, on-prem, whoever, and bang, I'm, I'm done. That's mm -hmm. my whole security strategy right there, really. Getting that done took a lot of engineering footwork on our side. Yep. There's a lot of scale-out database work that happens underneath. There's a lot of high I.O. database work that happens underneath. So getting to simple mm -hmm. was a lot of work. Well, that's what we pay for. The end result simple. Yeah. That's, that's what we pay for. <laughs> <laughs> You have today. You have the people in the room that built this. Yep. I think our goal today is to just not have layers in between you and the folks who, you know, spend the last couple of years of their lives with the blood, sweat, and tears working on this stuff. 